Hey everybody and welcome to this episode of Fly Fish University TV in which we are going to be demonstrating uh, the part one of the build of our new boat which is a Marlin SP14. I'm super excited about this boat. It's going to prove amazing on many of the still waters that we fish, even some of the moving waters that we fish. So we're gonna do a quick walk around and then I'm gonna walk you through some of the components that we're gonna use and why I like to use them and kind of what each, what their purpose is for each of them. So let's get started. So first I'd like to talk about why we chose this boat over any other boat. Well, first off, we're very lucky to work with Marlin Products and I'm very, very excited to be fishing this boat this year. So uh, this is a 14 footer and the nice thing about this boat is it's got a 63 inch beam width on it. So that's a super beamy, very, very wide boat. That means it's gonna be incredibly stable, especially fishing windy conditions. Great for one angler, two anglers, even three people in the boat. No problem with a boat this size. Uh, this is kind of my dream lake fishing setup. There, in my opinion, is not a better boat on the market with better dimensions for, especially for fishing lakes. And we're gonna go over a couple of the reasons why. But again, that's super wide. That that, that, that really, really wide beam width is very important to me, especially when I've got kids in the boat. I don't ever want to run the risk of them, of, uh, of the boat tipping and them ending up in the water. So now let's get into kind of how this boat's gonna be set up. And the first thing that we're gonna start with is anchors and anchor locks. <laughs> I've got both anchor mounts in and it's important to note that uh, you always want to have, if you're a right-handed caster, in my opinion, the rear anchor on the starboard side of the boat. And the reason for that is because if I'm gonna be fishing out the side of the boat, I want to stay away from the motor as much as possible, right? So with two right-handed casters, you can see here how it's going to favor fishing off of this side of the boat. Now, if I'm fishing by myself, I might be fishing out the stern end, but when I'm fishing off of the boat or if I've got two people in the boat, uh, it's nice to have, assuming that they're both right-handed casters, which most people are, then it's it's nice to have the boat, one side of the boat, so the starboard side of the boat for um, gear, and typically fishing off of the port side of the boat. So if you're looking forward, starboard is the right-hand side, and uh, port is the left hand side. Now, one thing that's important to note is that when you've got your anchor down, okay, and you're gonna scope your anchor rope out, so that means that you're gonna be letting out a little bit of additional line to really let those, uh, to let those pyramid anchors bury themselves in the mud, you don't want it to be coming in contact with the motor, okay, with the prop or anything. So the nice thing about having this anchor on the starboard side is that the is, is that the rope is always gonna be coming off of this side and it's never going to be uh, interfering with the motor and the motor is never gonna be interfering with it. It's really not ideal to have your to have your anchor rope scraping on you know, your propeller, whether it's an electric motor or whether it's a gas motor, just because of the sake that you can actually fray your, uh, you can actually fray your anchor rope quite easily that way. So that's why I always mount the rear anchor on the starboard side of the boat. So let's look first at the locks that we're gonna use. So the locks that we're gonna use are pretty simple. I've used these Scotty anchor locks for a really long time. On my 17 foot boat that I used prior to this, I actually went with custom welded, uh, custom built locks. And the reason for that is I was running uh, 25 pound anchors. I think that, you know, I don't think that the Scotties would have any issue with them, but the other issue was the extent. I, I needed the anchor to be extending out the bow a little bit further than, than the Scotties would. So so that was why I had the custom welded locks on my previous boat. But on this one, you know, these are plenty sufficient. I don't think that you're gonna have any issues, you know, cracking the stem in these or, or cracking the mounts or anything. I'm using 20 pound anchors, which we're gonna talk about in a minute. But these are the anchor locks that I'm going to be using on the Marlin SP14. In a very simple demonstration of the way that these actually go in, we're gonna stick the anchor lock into the mount. 
we're going to actually have the inboard sign facing obviously towards the inside of the boat. We are going to turn it 180 degrees and lock it in. That just ensures that it can't pop out while you're pulling your anchor or dropping your anchor, something that I never want to experience in my life. <laughs> Well, let's talk for a second about the rope that we're gonna be using. Having good anchor rope is really important because you're gonna absolutely shred your hands if you don't, and not a fun place to be. So I've used many different ropes. The one that I use, they have no idea who I am, so this is not affiliated in any way. Uh, I use one called Sea Dog. Um, sea Dog Anchor Line, it's a, it's a nylon rope, it's 3 eighths of an inch, uh, and this is 100 feet. So 100 feet, that's going to cover both my front and my back anchor. So I'm going to show you in a second just how we set that up. And not only how we set it up, but how I ensure that I have pretty much exactly the same length of rope on each end. And I'll also show you a little trick that I use to uh, make sure that your ropes don't fray and also to make sure that you don't lose one out the, uh, out the end of your anchor lock if you're trying to anchor in deeper water. Okay, so I've got it unwrapped and I've got 100 feet of rope here. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna take all of the anchor rope off. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to grab both ends and I'm going to put them up together. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna go out and find the halfway point, pinch it off and cut the rope there. So that's gonna ensure that I've got about 50 feet give or take a couple centimeters I've got about 50 feet of rope and that's gonna make sure that I'm not lopsided with my front anchor rope or my back anchor rope and that they're both the exact same length good so now I've got four ends of rope now really important is you don't want these ropes to fray so what I'm gonna do is I actually rack duct tape around each end of these obviously one of them is coming from the factory, two of them are coming from the factory and they're already nice and tight and glued. So what I'm actually gonna do is wrap duct tape around the end of the rope and I'm just gonna hit it with a lighter and what that's gonna do is kinda melt those ends together so that they're not splayed out and fraying all over the place. So this is pretty much exactly what you wanna see is, uh, is that nice tight end on the rope. I know that I don't have to worry about this fraying over time. Give that a second to dry but I know that all of those ends are now melted together. So the knot that we're gonna use here is a bowline knot. And the nice thing about this knot is that the harder you pull, the tighter it gets. But also when it comes time to take your anchors off, maybe at the end of the season, or in my case, never, uh, you can actually just pull or push, I guess, on the main line end, and you can actually undo the knot very easily. But as long as there's weight and tension at the other end, uh, it's not gonna come apart. It's probably the most popular knot that's used when it comes to attaching anchors. So the anchors that I'm gonna be using for this boat, I know this is many years of very, very strenuous training uh, that have led to this moment of me being able to lift this 20 pound anchor with one hand. Uh, no, I'm just kidding. But uh, anchors that I'm gonna be using are uh, lead pyramid anchors. They are 20 pounds. And really quickly, the, the little formula that I use for anchor sizing on your boat is approximately the length of the boat times 1.35. That was just kind of something that I came up with years ago that seems to be, I'll typically try to err a little bit on the high side of it, but uh, for boats up to 17, 18 feet long, uh, that's you know typically pretty good. Uh, so 20 pounds is gonna be great for this boat. It's gonna hold us in place. The reason that I love these lead anchors is because when they get down in the mud, the nice thing is if you're scoping out your anchor rope, so if you're letting out you know some additional rope, what's gonna happen is that these anchors actually turn on their side and they're gonna wedge themselves down into the mud, which means that the windier it gets, the harder it pulls the anchor and wedges the anchor into the bottom of the lake you're not really gonna get blown off of them and that's why I really, really like these anchors. So I think it's time that we put them on. And because there is a chance that you could lose your anchor rope, cause I've done that. Uh, what I typically suggest doing is actually just throwing a small half hitch, okay? in the end of your rope. And what that's gonna do is make it so that if you get to the end of your rope, not metaphorically speaking, but you literally get to the end of your rope, this cannot go through the lock, Can cannot go through the trap door, cannot go through the dog on the, uh, on the Scotty mount. So that's a nice thing about it. I'll just throw a half hitch in either end uh, just to make sure if you're trying to anchor in deeper water, you're not too sure how much rope you have, depending how windy it is. Um, I would really suggest just uh, 
throw a little granny knot or a half hitch in the end of your anchor ropes. So the last thing that we're gonna talk about is rod holders. And the holders that I use on this boat, the holders I've used for a really long time are actually made by Berkeley. Like Berkeley, like the company that makes power bait and pink bubblegum worms. The reason why I like these holders is because of their quick release mechanism on, on the holder. Now I know there's somebody watching this saying, have you tried the new Scotty rod holders? And I have, uh, they are also nice. I just didn't really have a reason to change. So I'm just gonna use my same rod holders that I've used for a very long time. Now what I've got these on is actually a clamp on mount. And the reason why I like this clamp on mount, I had toyed with the idea in, in my last boat, I had mounted a variety of different fixed mounts all around the boat. But the thing that I like about these is that I can put them anywhere I want. So when I'm fishing by myself, I typically like to fish down facing the stern of the boat. So facing the back of the boat. When I'm fishing with other people, I like to fish out the port side of the boat. I like to fish out one side of the boat. So rather than having mounts all over the place, I really, really like these. They're pretty heavy duty. They stay on the gunnel, no problem. And I really didn't see a reason to go drill in a whole bunch of rod holders. It's not like these are going to, it's not like I'm gonna hit a fish that pulls hard enough to pull this right off of the boat. Uh, once they're locked on to the gunnel, they're, they're on there pretty good. So I really enjoy these. I suggest, you know, fishing this, this uh, clamp on system is really nice just because of the maneuverability factor of uh, the maneuverability factor of putting these rod holders pretty much wherever you like. When my indicator goes down or I've got a fish on, I like to be able to pull these, uh, I like to be able to pull the rod out as quickly as I can. On that note, if you are someone who likes to troll, then I would actually suggest going with the standard uh, Scotty rod holders, the Scotty fly rod holders. And the reason for that is that when the rod is, is sitting at kind of a 45 or a 90 degree angle, when you're trolling, uh, I think that these are a little bit better and actually a little bit safer uh, than, than the quick release ones. And, uh, and the other thing when you're trolling, a lot of times fish are kind of setting the hook on themselves. So it's not like you have to get the rod out of the holder the second that the fish climbs on. So if you like trolling, these are great. And if you're fishing stationary, like I like to fish most of the time, uh, I really do like the, uh, really do like the clamp on holders and the quick release, uh, the quick release style rod holders. And that concludes this episode of installing just the basics of what we need to get on the water on our brand new Marlin SP14. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Jordan Ulrich. Subscribe, like this video, leave us a comment. And I think that the only logical thing to do now would be to clean up this mess and get on the water. <laughs>